My name is Fred Watson. I have the great honour to be Australia's astronomer at large, uh, working for the Australian government. So, what is a celestial globe? This is one of them. Uh, what it is, is a representation of the whole sky, um, which we see effectively as a sphere. Uh, when we look at the sky, we have no clue as to how far away the stars and the planets are that we're seeing in the sky. Particularly when you look at the stars, they just look as though they're painted on a surface. And that's the representation that we see with a celestial globe. It's the positions of things as if they were simply on a sphere with you, the observer, at the center. This celestial globe uh, belonged to John Tebbett, the astronomer. This is a very fine example of what is probably a mid 19th century globe. And if I can turn it so that you can see the maker's cartouche, which is here. It is a company called Newton, a very well known globe and instrument manufacturer in the United Kingdom based in London. So how does it work? The way they work is not just the fact that they can spin around like this, but, and I can't move this on this one because it's too delicate, but this uh, ring that you can see around the globe, uh, which is where it's pivoted at the top and bottom, that's called a meridian ring. And in use, what you would do is you would rotate this in that direction so that the angle of latitude that you're at matches the angle of the axis of the globe, which is the celestial poles. Now, there are two celestial poles, one in the north and one in the south. So in use, the globe will be set so that the pole of the sky is at the same angle as your latitude. And in this case, because we're in the southern hemisphere, the south pole would have to come up to be somewhere like that as the sky, uh, as the globe was set. Uh, and that angle of 34 degrees, which would be the latitude of Windsor approximately, would be the latitude or would be the setting that John Tebbett would have used. So what's going on here? Because you've got this strange ring around the side, it looks a bit like the rings of Saturn, but what that represents is the horizon. So as you look around along the horizon, if you imagine yourself at the center of this globe, um, you would uh, see this ring representing the horizon. And so in order to use the globe for calculations, uh, what you can do, for example, uh, is to look at um, the way a certain star might rise or set. And by rising, I mean it comes up above the horizon uh, and you can calculate what time that star would rise from the globe itself, just by looking at the scales that are printed on it. You can also do the same for the sun and moon. So what would John Tebbett have used this for? And the answer is to make rough estimates of what I was saying about the rising and setting times of objects like the sun and the moon and the stars. But John Tebbett was an extraordinary character in that he had the ability to make the most complicated uh, astronomical calculations uh, using very rudimentary <laughs> techniques, he would have done it with pencil and paper rather than the celestial globe because the accuracy with which you can measure things and determine things is limited. Uh, so to some extent this was an accessory for Tebbett, but if he wanted to make the real uh, answers to his calculations of the separation of objects on the sky, for example, because he was looking at comets, that was one of his main uh, sources of, of uh, inspiration uh, in his world of astronomy. T to calculate where the positions of those objects are, you can sort of do it with the globe, but if you want the high accuracy, you have to do it by hand calculations. And Tebbett was brilliant at that. He had a way with mathematics that actually mark him out as one of the extraordinary people of his time. As time went on, astronomical calculation became more and more important. By the time of Tebbett's death in 1917, uh, people were making calculations of extraordinary accuracy, things that you simply could never do with an analog computer 
which is what a celestial globe is, an early analog computer. And of course, it was not long before people recognized the ability of computers to do these calculations. Uh, so computers are now the tools that we use for this kind of thing. And in fact, in our own time, all the calculations that Tebbutt would have laboriously carried out by hand are done with an app that you can use on your phone. It's quite extraordinary the way those calculations have progressed since the time that Tebbutt was uh, using this sort of technology to make his measurements and calculations.